Okay, when we're looking at our impressions here, looking at footwear, there can be two and three dimensions of these impressions taken. It could be kind of an inked image, which would be a two dimension, or kind of a poured cast to take advantage of the three dimensions. So I'm going to cover that here. So looking at the footwear analysis, well, areas of footwear which are examined by analysis include the design of the shoe, the physical size and shape, the wear marks, and also individual identifying characteristics such as um, cuts and, or tears or, or the gum that might be present or a nail or anything else that would be kind of very specific to that one particular shoe. Now, two and three dimensional are impressions. Well, how do they differ? We're looking at two dimensional impressions. Those are impressions made, they could be on tile, um, wood flooring, some of the highly available surfaces, linoleum. Um, it can be also latent prints. Three dimensional impressions are remaining after a shoe permanently deforms a surface found in sand, mud, or snow. Um, so that is an example of the two to three dimensional impressions, and both can be very important. Now the visible prints, as we see here, these prints are visible with no additional processes needed. So the ones you can just kind of look down and quote find if you know where to look. This could be examples include soil or the materials picked up by the shoe or deposited onto a flat, hard, contrasting surface. There's a variety of surfaces and materials deposited makes recovery from those prints very complex. So again, whether it's something that's in a very hard surface, a very soft surface, a heavier individual, a lighter individual, all this is going to impact um, the visibility of those particular prints. And we have something called latent prints. So these prints require some process to make them visible or very difficult to visualize. These latent prints examples could be very barely visible dust if it's kind of in a, a kind of an attic, for example, hasn't been disturbed a lot. Uh, impressions and polishes or wax or waxes, um, those might need some additional kind of processes done to be able to make them visible, either to be photographed or just to be visible by the investigator. Those are latent prints. So here we're looking at two-dimensional impressions. So once an impression has been photographed, the print may be able to be lifted off the particular surface. Electrostatic lifting can help transfer it, and fingerprint powder uh, can be used in combination with what's called PVS, which is polyvinyl silo uh, which is a casting material um, that can be used for impressions where electrostatic lifting may not work. Um, so this is kind of this kind of example of how we can potentially lift that print off the area to be examined in the lab. We have also three-dimensional impressions. So this example here is where we can use dental stone as primary method of casting footwear impressions. On wet surfaces, uh, spray wax may be um, we have to be used to first seal the impression off, then a mix of dental stone on site with water in a sealable bag for about three minutes, and the stone hardens in about 20 minutes. In about 24 to 40 hours, about a day to two days, hours, it will have to be fully hardened and then can be used and stored. It's important to kind of create this little setup, but this is pretty easy to do on site. It doesn't really require a lot of materials uh, because it's all kind of self-contained. Now those 3D prints, or shoe prints made in the soft material, such as dirt or snow, the composition of the material will determine the detail of the impression made. This often requires making of a cast of the print, as we can see here, and there's other types, as I said, this dental stone, for example, we can have a little cardboard side here to help sit in place. Um, this can be a great way to help preserve those prints to be able to be investigated, looked at, and compared, and entered as evidence at a later date.